Luca Guadagnino's 2018 remake of Suspiria has been noted by many to be a distinct animal from its progenitor, the 1977 horror classic by Dario Argento. The plot of the original concerns American Susie Banyan arriving in Berlin to attend a famous dancing school. There, she discovers sinister goings-on under the mysterious directress Helena Marcos and Madame Blanc, who runs the day-to-day -day operations of the company. Eventually, she uncovers a cult devoted to witchcraft and to the worship of a trinity of godlike figures, Mother Tenebrarum, Mother Lycromerum, and Mother Suspiriorum. As the mystery unfolds, Susie is placed in danger and must destroy Marcos to free herself of the coven's designs. The movie plays out with virtuoso visual and sonic effect, a visceral experience of highly stylized backdrops and almost absurd, grotesque murders. Similarly, the remake involves Susie arriving from America to join the school. She encounters characters of similar name and function to the original. This time, Madame Blanc is the creative director of the company, and there is some kind of power struggle within the organization, between herself and the conspicuously absent Marcos. Susie is a virginal runaway, having rejected an Amish mother in pursuit of her dream to dance for Madame Blanc, whom she professes to have admired for years. She turns out to be a prodigy of alarming skill and insight as an artist, to the guarded delight of Blanc, who sees in her enormous potential. But Susie's dancing has a more than artistic effect, seemingly empowered by some malevolent force, which may or may not be Blanc, Marcos, or neither, her first dance under Blanc's direction carries such power that apparently unbeknownst to her, its contortions and violence literally break the body of Olga, a disgruntled student who is in the process of rejecting the school. Because of this untapped potential, Susie becomes the favorite to lead the troupe in a performance of Blanc's masterpiece, Volk. but she also becomes the focus of Marcos' own plan to extend her life and powers through a ritual dance that will enable her to, in some manner, consume Susie and her qualities. And so the rift between the camps forces a confrontation in the final act, when Marcos reveals herself as a grotesque perversion of humanity and demands Susie's sacrifice. Blanc senses something wrong, but is unable to intercede. You have the only mother you need here. Death to any other mother. It's at this point that Susie reveals herself as Mother Suspiriorum, the mother of sighs, and one of the trinity worshipped by the coven. She punishes Marcos for her hubris, and summons an incarnation of death to dispatch her and her followers, allowing each in turn to choose her fate. Which of the three mothers? Mother. Mother Suspiriorum. I am she. But 2018 Suspiria isn't really about witches or nightmare horrors. It's about fanaticism. The film takes its characters and essential plot points from the Argento film, but it also connects with the time and place in which the original was set, often exploring elements of story potential that Argento neglected. 
It takes place in 1977, the year of the original film's release, in, quote, a divided Berlin, against the backdrop of the so-called German autumn, a period of political upheaval characterized by protests and the terrorist acts of the so-called Red Army faction. In the opening scene, Patricia, a student in flight from the school, navigates through protesters in clash with police to find the relative safety of her psychiatrist's office. Dr. Josef Klemperer had survived the war and found refuge in West Berlin, but had lost his beloved wife, Anka. going to try and keep her alive after all. Marcus? When Patricia offers seemingly lunatic ideas of a powerful threat in the form of a coven of witches, Klemperer, of course, doesn't believe it to be literally true, but perhaps with the perspective of a witness to the rise and fall of Nazism and the mystery of his own wife's disappearance, he's more willing to consider such prognostications of an evil power rising than most. At any rate, when Patricia disappears as well, he is sufficiently motivated to investigate and to capture the notice and the malice of the mothers at the school. I have to tell Sarah to get out of there. She's the only girl I actually give a damn about. His investigation runs parallel to Susie's experiences and the discovery of goings-on at the school, Together, they present us access to this world of occult evil. Paul was already figured out things. She saw how they groomed me. <laughs> There's more in that building than what you can see. Patricia wrote about three mothers lost in time, predating all Christian invention. Pre-God, pre-Devil. Mother Tenebrarum, Mother Lacrimarum, and Mother Suspiriorum. Darkness, tears, and sighs. I saw images of that last night. In porcelain, these very fine things. You can tell they have money. Patricia said that uh, Marcos claims to be one of the three, but there is dissent among them. She wrote about Marcosites and Blankites, an internal division. Madame Blank's involved in this. Do they believe they're witches? You can give someone your delusion, Sarah, that's religion. That was the Reich. The Reich had its things. Insignia. Esoteric ritual. These mothers, yeah, they could be code names or founding members with metaphoric histories, I don't know. But I do know you are living with dangerous people. And that's what the movie is really about. Marcos's school on the surface was a haven, renowned for offering protection and an opportunity for women to flourish in a society that was often dangerous to them. It had survived the destruction of the war and gone on to gather reputation and international recognition as a place of excellence in artistry. She kept the company alive through the war. 
When the Reich just wanted women to shut off their minds and keep their uteruses open. That was blank. Thank you. Love their shores. What? What was that French? It's a bomb. I can smell it. There's a bank that way. Don't you know what's happening here? The hijackers are negotiating a release of semi prisoners tonight. The RAF. Adam Meinhof. They kidnapped an executive. During the war, he was a Nazi SS, an officer. Now he runs the German Employees Association. The dancing is both a way to create something artful and a form of ritual spellcasting capable of gathering and dispatching powerful forces. The rift in the faculty reflects this, as Marcos has seemingly forgotten her original purpose in pursuing the witching arts, and now sees her own glory, power, and the extension of her life as an end unto themselves. At the ritual intended to grant her Susie's power, she has the complacency to be completely unaware that she is in the presence of the very being her power derived from. You come here willingly. You must have no doubts, Susie. If you do, I can take you back. I can take all of this from your head. You can forget everything. I want this to be pure. We all know what you want. This isn't vanity. This isn't art. She mocks Blanc for her pretensions at artistic expression. Only power matters to Marcos, who some have mistaken for one of the three made manifest. Been on two sides of it for too long now. She has become a demagogue and a fanatic. The story makes frequent reference to organizations characterized by fanaticism and demagoguery, from the coven to political terrorists to Amish religious extremists. Overshadowing everything is the specter of a failed Nazi regime, its leaders once almost worshipped by a people who then engaged in the atrocity of the Holocaust and set the world into a destructive war. It was a movement with global impact and great power that ultimately fell into collapse the corruption and crimes of its leadership exposed to the shame of a broken nation. The movie also repeatedly references the PFLP hijackers of Lufthansa Flight 181, who were killed in Mogadishu. Their mission began as an effort to leverage the release of imprisoned Red Army faction members, but by its end had become its own pointless exercise in violence. As our story progresses, news items in the background follow that story to its fruitless conclusion. The Red Army faction and the so-called German Autumn protests and acts of terrorism culminated with the murder of Hans Martin Schleyer and the deaths of imprisoned RAF leaders. The pattern here is fanaticism, destruction, self-defeat, folly. Let's face this. Patricia is gone, Olga. We don't know where. If she's gone into hiding, she wouldn't have told us, would she? She would have told someone. We know that she had dealings with people who were interested in targets. And we know there was another bomb in Kreuzberg last night. She wouldn't do that. <laughs> she wanted to live her beliefs. Who doesn't admire that? And there's so much to change in the world. If she wants to live in a cellar filling bottles with petrol, that's her choice. And who won't be heartbroken if she's shot by police? <laughs> you and you will leave everything. It's all a mess. Isn't it? The one out there. The one in here. The one that's coming. Even Susie is born as a profane counterpoint to an Amish mother. Susie mentions that the Amish parted from their Mennonite origins because the famously devout Mennonites were not strict enough in their adherence to dogma. The Amish formed to execute a more fervent form of worship, the result of which is Susie. And the Lord shall raise the Monica. 
has committed sins. My daughter. They shall be forgiven him. My last one. She's my sin. She's what I smeared on the world. The ideal pursued by the witches is represented by Mother Suspiriorum, who, once revealed, does not overtly exhibit qualities normally thought of as evil. In fact, she seems compassionate. She purges the coven of its fanatical elements and offers Klemperer the peace of forgetfulness regarding events he has witnessed. Of Anka Meyer, of Patricia Hengel, of Sarah Sims, of Susanna Banyan, of all the women of your undoing. Every memory will vanish. Yet she is a sin smeared on the world, a very evocative aphorism. This seems to indicate that even if the ideal itself that inspires believers to follow is benevolent, or at least ambivalent, fanaticism will out, and corruption will ensue regardless. It isn't that Marcos made an avoidable mistake by descending into self-importance and fanatical self-obsession. It's that any ideological structure will and must self-destruct. Agree or not, this is what I take from a very different Suspiria to the fever dream of Dario Argento's original.